Well, my great-great-grandfather homesteaded here about 1880. Since then, through the generations, uh, of course, there's been farmers in each generation. Uh, right now, I'm the fifth generation. My son, Evan, is the sixth generation. And we are actually the only two left out of our ancestors that are, are still farming today. I'm Chuck Myers. I raise corn and soybeans in northeast Nebraska with my son Evan. We raise uh, corn and soybeans in about a 50-50 a rotation. May is our primary month for planting. October is our primary month for harvest. Farming has to be in your blood. It's a high-risk business. It's a dangerous business. But there are a lot of great rewards to it, too, a lot of great satisfaction. Some of the land has been in our family since 1880. Around that time, one farmer could probably feed about 15 people. Today, uh, one farmer feeds close to 160 people. I think it's important that everyone understands where their food comes from and how much we as farmers here raising that food care about the quality of it and, and making sure that it's a safe and abundant food supply. I'm running our sprayer. Using the GPS technology, we use auto steer and what we call AccuBoom, which turns on and off each sprayer boom automatically to minimize our spray overlap, to eliminate trips, to cut down on fuel usage and personal labor and labor costs. All of these help us do more with less. Well, soy water is a computer model. This is a program that's been developed by Jim Specht at the University of Nebraska. The whole point of it is to help better manage water as a resource. You enter in how much rainfall your field has received and it predicts how well the crop is doing, what stages of growth it should be at, and if it's an irrigated field, then you can use that da data uh, from that program to decide when to irrigate. The farmer would go in and say, okay, I had three hundredths of an inch last night. If you don't receive enough rainfall, it turns yellow over here on the right, and what that means is that it justifies an irrigation. In a nutshell, no-till is eliminating tillage from a field and leaving last year's crop residue on the surface uh, to eliminate soil erosion and, and a lot of the other benefits that come along with that. Corn cobs, the hus from last year, just makes a nice mat on the ground. It not only saved the soil, it saved the soil fertility. It's a great conservation technique. We use it on all of our acres, both for our soybeans and our corn. A lot of our neighbors in the coffee shop laughed at us when we started out, but they're all doing the same thing today. Well, one of my concerns for the future is that, you know, there's the ever-increasing demand for food, and by the year 2050, they say we'll have about nine billion people in this world and that means we're going to have to double our production investing in farmland you have to have the long view my ancestors looked at it the same way that's what farming is making sure that we do the right things today that are going to ensure that our farms are going to continue to be sustainable for the future